Welcome to Nerd Stalker. We are here talking to an old friend of ours, uh, Cassie Phillips. Well, why don't you tell us about yourself first, please? Sure. So I'm an event producer for the startup community. I've been doing that for about four and a half years now. I've worked on events that are now over, things like Snap Summit, um, some gaming events inside social apps. Uh, I also work on the SF Music Tech Summit, um, the Unleash Conference, SF Beta, and I'm working on my own event now, PhilCon. Awesome. So um, we're here specifically to talk about FailCon, uh, primarily. Yeah. And FailCon, can you talk a little bit what that is and, and sort of where it came from? Sure. So FailCon's been running now for about three years. Um, it started with my work in the event community and look at going to a lot of conferences and noticing that even at my own events, I was getting bored. Um, I was hearing a lot of the same stories, and most of them were success stories about really successful entrepreneurs and what they had done right. Um, and while that left me feeling really inspired to work on my projects, I realized that I couldn't leave the conference with any ideas of exactly where to start or what to do. Um, that these people who were successful, I couldn't really mimic kind of exactly what they had done. Um, so it kind of started as a joke where I would talk to people and say, wouldn't it be neat to have a conference that invited these same really great uh, accomplished speakers but required that they talk about their failures? Mm -hmm. um, and everyone didn't think it was funny. They thought it was a really good idea. Um, so I recruited an associate producer, Diane Laviglio, um, and that was back in 2009. Um, and so we started FailCon. Um, our first event got about just over 400 people. Um, our second one was just shy of 500. This year we're aiming for 500. Um, and we've also had a lot of requests to take it overseas. So we're working on a Paris event now wow. Wow. Um, and are in talks with about a half dozen other countries. Now, it seems like, you know, I'm not saying you're responsible for this whole thing, but I remember when the first one happened, you seem to have been just ahead of this this tide or something like that, because mm -hmm. right after FailCon sort of happened and you started talking about it a lot, suddenly everyone was like embracing failure and this and that. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that, what, the whole concept of that? Yeah, it was interesting because, as, as you put it, I don't know that FailCon is responsible for it. Frequently a lot of people have similar ideas at around the same yeah. time. Um, and I was probably just getting a feel that was in the community. Mm -hmm. But I did notice that for our first event, um, I actually got a decent amount of, of angry emails, people that were like, why are you doing wow. a show on this? It's so negative. Wow. Um, you're embracing the worst parts of the industry. You're discouraging people from being creative. This is a terrible idea. Mm. Why can't it be success con? <laughs> um, and with, when that was happening, to me, that was – just telling me that I was doing the right thing, that people were so yeah. passionate about this, even in a bad way, um, that, that they would take the time to write me. That, that almost seems like a natural thing to want to create, like you said, a success con, because that's what everyone talks about, right? And that, right. That sort of thing. And that this is such a, a turn, you know, a, a completely, well, it was a very completely foreign type of concept, right? Mm hmm I mean, there's so many cultures right. and everything that's sort of like, you know, it's, it's shame, you're shamed, right? If, if you fail right. or, you know, and now there are all these sort of trends of you, you want to fail like over and over and over. Right. It's so iterating, right? Right. And it's back now in, in – now that I'm bringing it to these other countries in Paris, hmm. I haven't gotten any kind of angry emails, but I've had meetings with people and two or three of them have said, well, you know, it would probably be more successful if you like just change the title a little bit. Yeah. If you could wow. make it like recovery conference uh -huh. or – or, you know, finding success con for I me, mean, something yeah, like that. And I'm like, yeah. no, no, it's fail con. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm sorry. So can you, can you tell us about some like past sort of sessions and speakers and, and what can people sort of expect um, traditionally in a fail con? Not, not sure. that it's going to be exactly the same this year. Mm -hmm. We do make an effort. It's fun each year. We, we, we ask our attendees for feedback and we do actually try to apply them. Mm -hmm. So between the first year was just one track. Um, in the second year, we added a smaller workshop session where people, just about 30 people, could meet and really workshop something. Um, we also added roundtables in the back to help with networking. Um, and this third time, we're adding more structured lunches that you sign up for ahead of time to try to network and kind of meet 10 mm -hmm. people that are interested in similar things to yourself. Mm -hmm. So there will be a lot of changes. Um, something that we do always have is, as I said, in those workshops, um, those are usually something pretty specific. This year, some of them include like branding, specifically, how do you design your brand image? Hmm. Um, where do you put it on the web? How do you control it? Um, how do you use it appropriately? We have one on it with Catherine Barr on negotiation techniques, especially for founders. So how do you negotiate contracts with your VCs? How do you negotiate a funding round? How do you negotiate with your wow. vendors, with your first clients? Um, 
And these will be really specific. If you're not in negotiations right now, it might not apply to you. Mm -hmm. um, so along with the workshops, we also have a large room, and that seats about 300 people. Um, in that room, we normally do talks that are a little more upper level, um, more about kind of big experiences that founders are likely to encounter. Um, one of the more memorable ones was our first year. We had Scott, the founder of The Lookery, which had shut down about six months earlier. Um, and he took the stage and he talked about just what it meant to shut down a company. Um, not quite the, like, the legal issues, but more emotionally as a founder. Um, and it was, it was especially inspiring because he did not talk about like whining about it or boo-hoo, poor me. Um, he, he came and he talked about exactly what it's going to mean when you've got to lay off you know, close friends and colleagues, people whose family you know, um, and, and what it takes to walk up to them and say, I've made a mistake to the point that I actually am shutting down the company and letting it go. Um, and he talked about how you both emotionally prepare for that and how you emotionally recover from it afterward. Um, the, the importance of taking some time off, of ha having support structures kind of outside um, of your company. And it was an incredibly inspiring talk just to have him just open himself to be so raw on stage. And it's something you just you don't see very often. Um, at the Web 2.0 Summit, we had Janice Frazier do a very similar talk of turn, uh, shutting down Emmett Labs and having to write um, her VCs and explain, and this is what she did really well that founders need to learn. She explained the five things that she personally did wrong. Um, even recognizing that part of the weakness of the company was having um, one of their employees, their upper level employees, wasn't right for his position. And rather than say, well, he wasn't right and it ruined the company, she said, I hired the wrong person for that position and I should have let him go earlier in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and recognizing the importance of as the founder and the CEO, every single thing is in theory your fault and you should have caught it earlier. Um, and that was also just a very inspiring and very emotional and open talk that you just you don't hear at other shows. Right. I, I definitely have to testify to that. Um, the former CEO of Dig, um, what's what's his name? His name mm -hmm. escapes me right Jay now. Jay Adelson. Jay Adelson. Incredible talk that he gave at Failcom. Mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite talks ever. And I, you know, I didn't know much about Jay Adelson. You know, and and that was super telling how. His uh, personal life uh, took a toll also mm -hmm. on this whole experience and his um, his uh, need to, to sort of leave Dig and, and, mm -hmm. and then his need to come back into, you know, uh, in encouraging startups and, and where he's right. at now is really interesting. Yeah. But also I think another super um, important point is how intimate this, this conference is. Mm -hmm. Just walking through the halls, I remember we had uh, – you had a – Mark Pincus, CEO of uh, Zenga, mm -hmm. right? And he was walking through the halls, and I had an opportunity to talk to him, you know? So, it, I mean, this this happens all the time at Felcon. You have access, yeah. like, yep. to people, to people you probably never right. would. I right? admire that um, our speakers are really open to staying. So I know last year, Esther Dyson stayed. She got there at 9 a.m., and she left at 6 p.m. Mm. Just talking to people there. Um, yeah. I know this year that Jay Adelson is excited to come back. He's not yeah. speaking. He's just like, no, it was a, it was a great crowd. I'm yeah. going to go stay for a couple hours. Right. Um, and I, I really like the Amiibo people were there, you know, talking to everyone mm -hmm. too. They were fantastic. They stayed all day. Yeah. yeah. Um, I tell people that what, what I, what I've noticed in the show is that just by the very nature of the name Failcon, mm -hmm. um, for most conferences you walk in and the rest of the people around you are there saying, you know, are you interested in what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. um, and at Failcon, just because of, that you're going to an event called failure about failure, people walk in with the question, I have a problem. How can you help me? Mm -hmm. um, which just creates an entirely new dialogue between all the attendees. It's mm -hmm. not, are you interested in me? It's, can you help me? Mm -hmm. um, and just that little change just changes the entire show dynamic. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about international fail con. What can you tell us? Sure. About? So uh, a big thing that we're doing this year is we are taking the show on the road. Um, we've had a lot of interest. The show last year had about 30 people, 30 percent of it was people that were not from California and about 15 percent were people that were not from America. Um, so this year we had a lot of interest overseas to start tra traveling with the show. Um, our first stop is Paris. That's in September. Um, Microsoft's being a really gracious host there. Um, we are getting de in development in Chile. We're hoping to do that in wow. January um, at the Universidad Católica. Mm. Um and we just started a dialogue with um, Singapore, Australia, Brazil, and South Africa. Wow. Um, so hopefully we see those stops in 2012. So Holy it's smokes. it's really exciting to get an opportunity to actually change a culture 
and change its opinion on failure, which mm-hmm. to me is really the point of the conference. Mm-hmm. So um, are you open to ideas about FailCon? Are you looking for the for public to, to give you ideas in terms of like keynote speakers, sessions, or anything like that? Or I am, yes. Um, we just started our hunt for our October keynote speakers. Um, as I think we've started to mention, some of the past ones include people like Mark Pincus, um, Max Levchin, Jay Adelson, David Pogue, Steve Blank. So pretty upper level people in the community, really big influencers, well accomplished. Um, we've just started looking. We've got some invitations out, which is great. Um, but I would love to know who people want to see there. If you know people that would be good keynotes, there are people you really admire that you want to meet. Um, I'm not afraid to send an email to anyone uh, to reach out and try and get them there. I just would love to hear who the community wants to see there this year. Great. So when is this happening and where is this happening? Um, Our San Francisco show is happening October 24th uh, at the Hotel Kabuki, which is in Japantown in San Francisco. Great. And is it uh, is it one day? Is it a a weekend event or or what? And how it is one day. It's one Monday. Um, I believe it'll be about 9 a.m. to about 6 p.m. Is there going to be like multiple tracks? With obviously an after party afterwards. Oh, okay. And multiple tracks or or is this something that someone just shows up and they're just go through this whole thing we will still do our workshop tracks so there'll be a side room that seats between 30 and 50 so i really we'll put up the agenda about a month ahead of time um and i really suggest that people kind of figure out which workshops they want to be in because those fill up pretty quick Mm -hmm. and then we'll have a main room that seats about 300 people um we'll expect about 500 throughout the day um and as i mentioned during lunch you can opt into kind of an organized lunch track and those will be like 10 different topics and you kind of pick the one that you'd like to sit in on well, you're busy. I don't know how you hand the, handle all of this. It's, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> all the things you're doing, plus the calendar of events that you do, it's it's amazing. You know. Yeah. Well, thank you. One of the hardest working women in the, in the Bay Area, I have to say. <laughs> 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 so, if we need to contact you or any further information, how do we how do we get a hold of you? Sure. So you can learn about the show at its website, which is thefailcon.com. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Web Wallflower because secretly I'm really shy. Um, yeah, it's at right above your head right there. Is but, it really? Yeah, yeah. It says Web that's Wallflower right. right above you. Great. So that's my <laughs> that's my Twitter handle. Uh, although um, you, you people listening to the podcast will not see that, so ignore that. Oh, that's too bad. Never mind. Don't no, don't look at that. Um, it's Web Wallflower. Uh-huh. Uh, you can also email me at Cass, my name C A S S at WebWallflower.com. Great. Awesome. So FailCon, October 24th, Kabuki Hotel, San Francisco. Make sure to be there, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Bye, guys.